but there's just something so special about designing your own things. Just try it out. You will probably fail at first, but that's completely fine. Hi, my name is Lisa and I make crochet and knitting videos here on my channel and welcome back to a new video. And I'm doing something exciting today. I am going to film a video that, video that I've been wanting to film for a while, which is like tips and recommendations on how to start writing. Oh, I'm just going to adjust my seat. How to start writing and designing your own patterns and your own crocheted and knitted clothes because it's something that I was so overwhelmed with whenever I was a beginner with knitting and crochet so I felt like passing down some advice to you guys and hopefully helping you a bit and I asked my Instagram followers at Lisa's Knit Club little self promo here <laughs> I asked them for recommendations as well so thank you so much for everyone who has helped me I got some very specific questions as well like how to decrease for the arms or how to design a top or like very specific ones and I'm not really gonna address those in this video this is not really the video for that but maybe in the future I will make like more specific detailed videos on how to design a sweater or how to design a top or something like that but for now I'm gonna give more like general tips and tricks on how to start designing your own crocheted and knitting knitted clothes I must say that I have uh, brought out one pattern, no, two patterns, one free one and one paid one, and they are both crocheted. I am working on some knitted stuff as well, but I'm very picky with bringing out patterns, so I have designed quite a lot of things, but I haven't brought out that many things. <laughs> so yeah, so maybe for those of you wondering about um, my pattern. Okay, let's start! First, I thought maybe let's start a little bit with uh, why you would want to design your own crocheted and knitted clothes. Because in the beginning, I thought like, why on earth would you like want to design something yourself if there are so many designs out there that are done in a beautiful way and that are quite like much easier to follow, of course, than to make your own design. And that's perfectly fine, especially as a beginner. I love just following others' patterns and I still really like that. But there's just something so special about designing your own things. It's when you have a vision of what you want uh, for clothes and having it actually like come to life is so special for me. And I just find it super fun to design my own stuff and to think of what I like and whatever I'm like lacking in, in stores and in my own closet and that I can design it myself. That's just so cool and... That for me is one of the main reasons. Another reason could also be uh, money-wise. You have a lot of free patterns, but there are also many paid patterns. So maybe if you wanna like save some money, you can design your own stuff instead of, of course, following other people's patterns. For me, this never really was the issue. I just love this the designing process and to have something original of my own. And that's just the coolest thing for me, but do not feel obligated at all to design your own stuff. I feel like in the knitting and crocheting world, especially if you are sharing your work online, it sometimes feels like you're obliged to make your own designs and to bring out your own stuff. But if you just want to follow other people's patterns or not share your own designs, that's completely fine as well. Do whatever works for you. I still make a lot of designs from other people as well because I love learning from them and I also don't want to go through the hustle of making my own patterns all the time since it is like a bit more of an effort than just following someone else's pattern. So don't feel obliged. And then I also want to address another point quickly and that is imposter syndrome. For me especially, still now actually, but especially in the beginning I felt like why on earth would someone ever buy a pattern from me? Like I have not that much experience, I'm still like a little bit over a year into my knitting and crocheting journey so that's still quite new to the hobby and to the craft so whenever I started releasing patterns I was like why would someone ever buy this from me and yeah I would feel a lot of imposter syndrome and I still do that sometimes but just know that there is no reason to feel that at all and that people will support you maybe not even as exactly for your patterns well that is a good reason but they just love to support you and follow you in your journey so be open about your experience of course and 
about your patterns do not like sell a lie just know that imposter syndrome is very normal and that i feel like everyone in the creative world or maybe like everyone in the world feels like they have imposter syndrome let's get started with the actual tips that i have for you for those of you who want to learn how to design your own stuff my first and biggest tip and this is what people have been also sending in a lot is just do it just start and i know that this sounds so easy and it is not that easy to do but it is really the truth just start doing something if you think like oh i have this this um sweater in mind that i think could look super cool just try it out you will probably fail at first but that's completely fine just start doing it and don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's like a big part of the designing journey making mistakes and having to start over and over again but i know that this tip is like rather abstract but i wanted to start with it anyways so i will get into more detail from now on i would say first start with something simple what i did at first for example was i'm actually wearing it right now i didn't do this intentionally but if you see ends popping out uh yeah i didn't really weave them in so sorry for that but this is a sweater vest that the vest itself is designed by my favorite things knitwear i will link uh here which one it is because i'm not sure which number so it's a, not a design by me but i really wanted the sheeps on it because it's inspired by the harry styles sweat sweater vest the sheep sweater vest and i really wanted that so i just knitted this sweater vest in blue then i figured out with the stitch count how to do duplicate stitches to make the sheep on it and that way i didn't have to design the whole vest myself but i could still make the design that i wanted so i would suggest starting with something rather simple like that so either doing duplicate stitching if you are a knitter you could of course also do intarsia knitting like color work on an on a base pattern already but that's a little bit more complicated at least in my opinion and if you are a crocheter i have for example done applications so i have my flower cardigan i designed it one completely myself but you could for example perfectly find an already existing pattern of a cardigan online and then figure out of an application you really want and put it on top of it it sounds super simple maybe some people would say this, is, this isn't even making your own designs but for me it really is because it's like getting your own putting your own twist on something that's already made by someone else of course credit the other person and like as of writing patterns and, or, and originality this is maybe not like do not publish this pattern while using someone else's information but if it's for yourself like i did with my, for, my first designs this is a really great tip and I would also say that using free patterns can be really good as a guideline. As I said before, don't just copy them, but look at some free patterns and see that the way they construct things and that can be like great for inspiration. And since they're free, you can look at a lot of them and see what you like and what you don't like, etc. So yeah, that's a big tip of mine. Then for actually designing something from scratch, I always start first with sketching something out. Just in my notebook, I have a beautiful notebook. Let me grab it. I have this notebook, this Moomin notebook that I bought a couple of weeks ago, actually. And I sketch out all my designs. Let me see. Yeah, this is like very simple, a pair of socks. I just sketched some socks, but you get the drill. I first sketch out my design and then you start with calculation processes and everything like that. It really helps, for example, if I'm making a tote bag, I always t take a tote bag that I already have and that I really like and uh, get those measurements and then I can copy those measurements for my crocheted or knitted piece, for example. Same can go for sweaters, if especially if it's just for yourself. It's rather easy to like look at the measurements from a sweater that you maybe already have and then just copy that into a knitted or crocheted piece. So start by sketching it out. That always helps like to transfer something from your brain onto actual paper or digital digitally as well. Could work as well, of course. And then like for me, that really helps to see whether I actually like it, not only in my head or actually in person as well. And then it's just time to start making some calculations and figure it out. 
this is so specific that I can't really give you like good tips on how to exactly do that because it differs so much per clothing item and everything but I would say just try it out really and then another tip that some people have sent in or actually a lot of people sent in is to write absolutely everything out because trust me you will forget stuff later on I've made this mistake so many times where I was like oh yeah I think that I will remember but no you won't so write down everything write, write down what yarn you use, the hook size, the needle size how many rows, how many centimeters, how many like the width write down absolutely everything because it will be so much easier to track it down later and if you want to make adjustments you can just see exactly where you want to do that so I have uh, always have notion pages like for my project that I am working on and that's so easy because you can easily change stuff that for me works in the best way possible but you could do it on paper as well that works of course so write down everything like absolutely everything and then if you want to make a pattern for other people of course like in terms of sizing I would first you start with your own size that's for me is at least easiest to do so start with your own size and then later on start doing calculations for like sizes for other people hi it's editing Lisa here and I lost some of the footage so I'm very sorry for that but I mentioned two more things that I felt like were quite important and that I didn't want to just not put into the video anymore and that is First of all, that you can make your pattern stitch based or centimeter based, of course. Personally, I prefer something to be centimeter based because it's easier to follow for others and then it can also help if you use different yarn. And then another way, I'm gonna switch arms because it's already hurting. And then another uh, great tip that some people mentioned was to watch like design a video with me types of videos like Jenna Phipps has a lot of them like free handing stuff I have a few like crochet with me videos as well where I design something and people mention that it really helps them to see the design process and see what they are like doing and the thought process and all of that so those are two of the things that were unfortunately left out and disappeared somewhere let's continue with the video I was talking about tools to use so and Stitch Fiddle is a really easy tool to use because you can make color work designs in it and it's just not difficult at all to work with. It has some limitations, but for a beginner it works perfectly fine. Then I know that a Ribbler has a really easy function to build patterns with as well. They have like, also you can make color work charts in there and they, it's a very easy to use website. So I am, I actually also sell my patterns on there as well, if you want to buy them. But I personally prefer designing my own patterns like completely in Canva or in Photoshop because I am such a graphic design lover and like I just, I'm not the best at it, but I really like it, like adding my own illustrations and things like that. So I use either Photoshop or Canva for, for you, uh, designing patterns, but then I make the charts in either Stitch Fiddle or Ribbler. So yeah, I use a combination of all of these tools. Just check them out and see whatever works best for you. Then I kind of mentioned this already before, but for the format of your pattern, look at some patterns that you have already bought and see what you liked about them and what you disliked about them. For me that really helps, for example, it's in the really simple things such as do you want your pattern to be vertical or in landscape, like in portrait or in landscape, paper mode, some things like that, but also more like complicated things, do you want to add videos, do you like it when there's a lot of pictures involved, things like that, make up for yourself what you like in other people's patterns and of course don't copy anything from them, but inspiration is always good and yeah, you can use it for your own thoughts and designs. If you are actually going to publish your pattern, then I always advise people to look for testers. There are many ways in which you can find test knitters or crocheters. I usually do it through Instagram, but you can also do it in various Discord groups. For example, I know that Tiffany from Typical Bliss, she has a Discord server and in there you can also look for testers if you want your garment to be tested. So I would always recommend that because it is the only way to see if 
like other sizes work, if the instructions are clear and everything like that. And don't be afraid to ask your testers to be really critical because sometimes people they are like they want to be kind to you because they don't want to hurt your feelings or be very critical but i find it most useful when people are actually critical and like they give feedback that really works for me so don't be afraid to do that and with testing i also wanted to address a little bit a discussion that has been going on lately that i find really interesting about free labor and testing and for me in the future whenever my business would grow i would really want to be able to pay for my testers at least for the yarn that they have to buy or anything else to like compensate for the amount of work that they are doing for my design but for now that's not possible for me but be like think about this and be very grateful for your testers because i think that in the world of knitting it's very actually a little bit weird that we just have like so much people working for free to to do stuff but i want to address this topic more in an upcoming video as well but i wanted to address it like quickly to not just not talk about it i wanted to say this like one more time and that is that you should not feel obliged to push out patterns really you don't owe it to all right my camera died sorry for that but i wanted to say that you don't owe it to anyone to start publishing and sharing your designs also if you've made a pattern just for yourself and don't want to share it with anyone that's completely fine really don't feel obliged to share it if you don't want it if you don't enjoy it if you find out that you actually don't write, like writing patterns at all but you just like designing things but not writing patterns about it that's completely fine and don't feel obliged to do it really remember that knitting and crocheting can be a hobby some people make a living out of it many people want to keep it a hobby and that is completely fine and you can still share stuff about it if you want to but you don't have to share anything really <laughs> remember this please then something that i did as well for my very first pattern it is to publish it as a free pattern this was because i wanted to test out i felt like i didn't have the skills yet to make a like paid pattern so i made a free pattern first just to see and just because i wanted to give back to people that were following me and yeah you of course don't have to do it but it can be a tip for me at least it made it much less scary to publish my first pattern because i knew that it was free and people could download it or not depending on whether they felt like doing that so yeah then a great tip that i always do if you end up publishing a paid pattern or a free one actually as well make sure you google a little bit and search on instagram and on ravelry for example ravelry ravelry for example if there aren't any very similar designs out already i do this because of course it can happen that by coincidence you make the same design as someone else it could also happen that you have maybe seen something and then forgot about it and then copied it things like that and i always like to check it because i wouldn't feel good knowing that there is some other designer that has a very similar design and that it would feel like me um, copying something from them so do this please and if it happens to be the case message that designer and explain them the situation and at least let them know because i feel like plagiarism is such a big problem in the knitting and crocheting world already with big brands stealing designs from small creators so please within the community let's keep it nice and communicate with each other about these kind of things and then lastly i said it before but have fun with this this is really the coolest thing ever that we are able to design our own stuff and think of whatever we like and then make it ourselves that's just incredibly cool so remember that and have fun with it i cannot wait to see what other people are making and let me know what project you are working on because I'm always curious to know about that and to hear about that. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked my video, then please like and subscribe because I will be back next week. So I will see you again next week. Till the time, stay safe and doei!